Hello and welcome to my channel. In this episode we're going to take a look at how to convert a Microsoft Excel file or a numbers file to a CSV using AppleScript. We'll use the script editor to write a droplet app that will accept the Excel file or numbers file and then process it to convert it to a CSV file. If you've watched any of my previous videos you know I normally start with an on run handler but in this case we're going to start with an on open handler because we're going to create a droplet. Now that we've got the on open handler written we're going to create a repeat loop to process through each of the files that were dropped onto the script. So we'll say repeat with this file in dropped files. And then of course we'll end our repeat with an end repeat statement. So the variable dropped files will contain a list of all the files that were dropped onto the script and we'll repeat through that and set the variable this file to one of those files each time we iterate through the repeat loop. As we process our file, we're gonna to wanna to know where to store the new CSV file. So to do this, we'll get the container of the file that we're currently working with. So let's write a handler called get containing folder and we'll pass in our file path. This will allow us to get that folder that the original Excel or numbers file was in and then we'll use that same location to save the new CSV file in. So next we'll say tell application finder to set the folder to container of and then we'll use the file path variable that we sent in as an argument but we'll coerce it to an alias. And then we'll return the folder as a string. So when we call this from within our repeat loop, this will give us the ability to get the container of any file that we drop onto the script, store it in a variable, and then use that later to save our CSV to that destination folder. That way we can always save our CSV relative to where the original file was. So we'll do set export location to, and then we'll use our handler get containing folder, and then we'll pass in this file. So now we have the folder where we want to save the file, but we also need to come up with the correct name for it. So we'll write a handler called get base file name, and again we'll pass in our file path. And this will allow us to get the file name of the original numbers file or Excel file, and use that when we rename it to a CSV. So in order to do this, we're going to want to get that Excel file, Excel file or numbers file name without their extension. So we'll put a try block in here and we'll create an on error handler and we'll do our end try. So in order to strip off the file extension, we'll need to know a little bit more information about the file. So we'll use a command called info4 in order to figure out what type of file we're dealing with so we can strip off the extension. So we'll say set this file info to info for file path as alias and then we'll say set the name to name of this file info and then we're also going to capture the extension but the extension within info for doesn't contain a period so we're going to add that period so we'll say set the extension to and then we'll say the period ampersand name extension of this file info as string so that'll contain a dynamic entry of whatever the extension was for that particular file preceded by a period. And then just like we've done before, we'll say set TID to Apple Scripts text item delimiters. And then we'll say set Apple Scripts text item delimiters to the extension. So we're gonna use this to remove the extension from our string. So then we'll say set short name to text items of the name. And because we set our text item delimiters to our extension, short name will now contain the name of the file without the extension. And lastly, we'll do some housekeeping by setting Apple Scripts text item delimiters back to what they were originally by using our TID variable. And just in case we hit any kind of an error, we want to set our Apple Script text item delimiters back to their original state again, so we'll put that in our error handler as well. All we have left to do now is to return our new short name variable, so we'll say return short name as string. So now we can head back up to the main body of our script and use our new handler to get the file name of our file. So we can say set the name to get base file name and then pass in our file path. So we'll say this file, which will set our variable the name to the name of this file being processed without its extension. Now for the real meat of the script, we get to tell numbers what we want it to do. So we'll say tell application numbers and then we have to remember to put in our end tell to complete the tell block. And we want to tell numbers to do three things. We want to tell it to open our file, we want to tell it to export our file, and then we need to tell it to close our file. We'll start with the open, so we'll say set my document to open this file. 
that'll give us a variable that we can use for the export. So we'll say export my document to file and then we're going to use our export location variable with the name. So we'll say export location ampersand of the name ampersand and we'll add our CSV extension as string and then we'll say as a CSV with properties and then we'll give it the additional properties from numbers which in this case is just exclude summary worksheet true. Now that we've written the statement to export the CSV file we just have to close our document so we'll say close my document saving no. That pretty much completes what we were trying to accomplish with our script so assuming we can get this to compile correctly and we haven't made any mistakes we should be good to give it a test. So let's go ahead and try to compile we don't get any errors so let's go ahead and save this as a droplet. So we'll give it a name. In this case, I'll just call it export as CSV. And then we'll save it as an application rather than a script file. And I'll just put it on my desktop. I've already got a test Excel file and a test numbers file that we can use. So we'll just close the script and I'll select those two files and drop them on our new script. And we'll see that they open in numbers and we get a CSV file for both of them named with their original names just changing the extension to CSV and they are in fact now CSV files. As always thanks so much for watching I hope you found this useful or educational if so please consider smashing the like button and I'll see you in the next video.